currently vice chairman of the Florida Resident and Lodging Association and the chairman of the Board of Leadership Florida. And Amanda is the vice president of marketing and community relations and has a special interest in promoting education, accessibility, and inclusivity, if I can get that word out, for all for education. Uh, they have been recognized for their leadership and philanthropy in numerous organizations. The one award they received in 2018, which pertains to their uh, lecture today, was the National Restaurant Association's Restaurant Neighbor Award for their work in the Dive into Reading program. That program is starting its sixth summer shortly, and um, it's for grade, uh, grade level reading for Title I schools in the Manatee, Sarasota, and DeSoto count, uh, counties. I've been a volunteer with Diamond Reading for a number of years. I can attest to uh, the benefit for the students, but also the benefit for, for us volunteers. So without further ado, I would like to say welcome. Thank you for coming. Wish it was a bit of honor. Thank Thank you. Last time we spoke to you guys, it was National Wine Day, and, and so we brought wine for everyone. So I thought that would, you know, by everybody else, but we should have advertised that we were. Absolutely. You know, it's always it's always better to ask for, for beg forgiveness than ask permission. So we just brought wine into the library and figured we, we could beg forgiveness later. <laughs> but I didn't know about the fellowship hall if uh, if Roser would appreciate us breaking the wine. In. I thought pancakes would be served in here. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Uh, Amanda and I are honored to uh, to come out on the island to to talk to y'all. It's obviously. It, the island means a lot. I was, I was looking when it said 40 years, your, your organization is 40 years this year. And, and I think back, because I started right across the street at Fast Eddie's in 41 years ago. So in 1981, I walked in there and I was working in the phosphate mines in, in Bartow in the center of the state. I was still in college, but it was a summer job. And we went in and had dinner at Fast Eddie's and my dad said, why don't you move down here? Live? They had a beach house live in the house, wait tables, and live on the beach this summer. And boy, there was a tough decision to be made there. <laughs> Phosphate mines doing steel fabrication in Barto or living on the beach. It didn't take long, so I applied for a job. Uh, the next day, got a job, went back to Barto, quit my job there, and, and I've been an Anna Maria Island rat every since, and it's just the greatest it's the greatest place in the world. It truly yes. is. I absolutely love it here. Um, it's gotten even better since I met my wife and married her. We actually met at the Island Community Center. We did. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the island has a lot of a lot of deep emotions for for both of us. We're we're happy to be here. One of the things that tie us to libraries is obviously we're all about education. We're all about grade level reading. And if there's anyone in our country, if not our state, that is not worried about grade level reading, we're, we're, we're missing something. We, and it's gonna take all of us to help. Um, and Mentee is horrendous. I believe we're 51% of the kids, the rising third graders are not at grade level reading. And that just blows you away. And some of the statistics you'll hear about these children are, are just heartbreaking the number of homes that have zero books in them. Zero books in them. And a lot of it, you know, you can understand when you think about it, is they move a lot. So if you're moving for jobs and so forth and you're loading everything up, you're not carrying books with you, right? That, that just takes too much space. So you, you move to a new location, a new apartment, a new home, and you don't take it with you because you don't have space there either. So it, it is understandable, but these children that are growing up with the books in their home, are, are going to be so far behind, so far behind. How many of y'all were at 
uh, the first time we talked, I think it was like three or four years. That was uh, before my time, so it was at least five years ago. Yeah. Five we're, we're, I know Denise was there, but anyone else? Good, I won't repeat myself then. <laughs> so I had never understood why third level, grade level reading at third grade was so important. I just never understood that. I thought, God, that's so much pressure to put on a third grade kid to figure out if they're at grade level. They, they determine how many prison cells they're gonna need when these children are 18 years old. The, the percentage of kids that are not at grade level reading that they don't graduate high school, they drop out, they're part of the juvenile detention center, they're, they're, they just become juvies and they become part of the system. And I could not understand for the life of me why that was until Amanda and I got more and more involved with grade level reading. And from birth, until third grade, you learn how to read. From fourth grade on, you read to learn. And I, I never understood, I mean, I just, Amanda and I fortunately have no children, so we didn't have to go through, you know, raising kids and having them in school. But you, I mean, you learn your ABCs in kindergarten, you learn words and sentences, and you learn to read until third grade. And they assume, when you get to fourth grade, that you can read. And so you get to fourth grade, it's like, okay, read chapter one, and we'll talk about it on Tuesday. And so if you can't read, it's hard to talk about the subject that you have not, no idea about. So that's part of the issue where, where they're escalating children, advancing, promoting them, whatever you want to say, if they haven't earned third grade promotion, right? If you haven't passed third grade, you shouldn't go to fourth grade. But the social promotions, we're just doing a disservice to our children by doing that. Because you put them in a room with people that know how to read, and the teacher says, read chapter one, we'll talk about it Tuesday. She reads chapter one, he does not, because he can't. And we start talking about chapter one, and he gets lost, he gets frustrated, he gets fidgety, and he acts out. And that disrupts everybody, and it just becomes a bigger problem. So the social promotion is not the best way to, to do it. We've gotta teach our kids to read. And it's gonna take all of us. Right? So we started our Dive Into Reading program five years ago. This will be our sixth year. And, and we talked to so many people and they said, well, this is such a big problem. I'm just one person. And we just said, if one person touches one person, that's a start. I'll take one, I'll take one kid coming out of our program that says, oh my God, I love reading. I just never knew how much fun it was. So our program, it, it has morphed a bit, but it's, the, the basis of our program is we bring, it's called Camp Rise. So Camp Rise is part of the school system and it's for children that are at least one grade level behind in reading. So we bring rising first, second, and third graders. So these children are six, seven, eight years old, some are less. Rising first, second, and third graders, we bring them into our restaurants, we bring them in, and we bring adults in. So we'll have 20 to 40 children in a restaurant one day a week for six weeks. And we do it with all 15 Title I schools. So 15 days during a week, there is a, a school in, one of, in a restaurant. So we do it in three of our restaurants. Gecko, well, we do it in three of our restaurants, but three of them do three days a week. Two of them do two, or one of them does one day. So, and then we also have geckos. We have the Bishop Museum. I finally got it right. I didn't say South Florida Museum. We do it at the Bishop Museum, and we have a caterer come in and feed them there. And we did it at Oak Bricks this year at downtown on Main Street. And so 15 different sessions are happening with 20 to 40 children. So last year we did 590, 559 children this past summer. 559 children came in once a week for six weeks. So they come in, they sit at a table with adults and, and their, their buddies from school. They sit down, we teach them life skills. We teach them to look you in the eye. Hi, my name is John. Shake hands, make eye contact. And then they sit down at a table and they learn how to eat with a knife and fork. Now, a lot of these children have never been in a restaurant. A lot of these children have never sat at a table. And a lot of these children have never eaten with a knife and a fork. And you think, no way, no way. One of the problems I have had in the past 
and I think a lot of people do, is you assume that everyone raises their children the same way I was raised or you raised your children. And that's a horrible assumption. It's a horrible assumption. Because people aren't, for whatever reason. And that's another thing. Well, it's, it's you know, that community's problem, or it's the environment's problem. It's, all that. it's a lot of problems. It's a lot of problems. Uh, there's a lot of single families. There's a lot of families with two parents in the home that are both working their keysers off to put a roof over their head and put food on the table. People are struggling. People are working hard. It's not, it's not, you know, yes, there are people that don't give a rat's rear about things, but there are a lot of people that care about their children. They're just struggling. And so we, we just took the, equa uh, the, the excuses out of the equation. We're like, it's not our fault that these kids don't have that. We want to give them one-on-one -on -one adult time. And so they come in, they eat with everybody at a table. We have a group read, so we hire facilitators. We hire teachers from our school system. And so we'll have two teachers at each location every day. So that's 30 teaching units every week. We have them there so that they can work closely with the, the teachers, I'm sorry, with the students and the mentors. We have the group read, so the teacher will have this. And the museum is cool because they go in the planetarium and the books up on the planetarium roof. I mean, all the other restaurants, the teachers at the at our restaurants are like, why don't we get a book? You know, we're, we can't put it on the on the on the ceiling. Yeah, I'm like that's oh, not fair. So, um, but you know, it, it's getting the kids interested in reading, and so they do a read aloud. So they're following along with the teacher as the teacher reads, and then we break everybody up. So everybody grabs their child and they go to a table somewhere in the dining room, and they have one-on-one -on -one time. And it's a chance for them to get personal touch. It's a you know, a pat on the back. Oh, you're doing very well. You're reading well. So the child will read to the adult. And, you know, the adult can figure out how well the child's reading, if the child needs help. We have all kinds of books and all kinds of levels of books for, the, for them to read. And so that's why we have two teacher facilitators, as well as the teachers from the school are there. So they're constantly walking around, and so if they see, you know, a mentor with this young first grader and they're struggling, they'll just come and bring them a lower level book. And they'll just say, you know what, this is a story about bears. I think you'll like this better. So the kid doesn't know, you're too stupid for this book. You know, they, we don't take the self-esteem out of it. And that's the cool thing. It's like, hey, here's the one about bears. Oh, I love bears. And you get them interested in it. And so we're not trying to dumb it down. We're not trying to go below them. We're trying to bring them up. And so our goal is to give them the next level. If they're rising second graders, we're giving them second grade books because we want to bring them up, but we're also gauging where they are and, and, and get them. But they're getting that. I mean, you think about a family that has two kids, three kids, four kids. They never get one-on-one -on -one adult time, right? Because if you got three kids and you're trying to help Johnny with his reading, well, Susie, Sally, and Sarah are screaming, and so they're, you know, sit down, shut up, and that's all they're hearing. So this is a chance for one-on-one -on -one mentoring. So we've been very, very fortunate. Obviously, Jan, Jan has, has read with us. Denise has read every year. She's one of our five-year veterans. She's yeah. awesome. Even during COVID. It, during COVID. Oh. So in, in 2020, you know, everybody shut everything down. Well, we, we came up with a way to do it on Zoom. And I cannot tell you how proud I am of people. We had people go out and buy new computers, iPads, so that they could, because you've all been on a Zoom. I know you have. But we did it and we had breakout sessions. So we would take an adult and a child and put them electronically in a room together. And so they, we had to, to teach everybody how to share their screen on Zoom. And so the adults had the books because we sent everybody a PDF of all the books that the kids had. And so they could then open the book on the screen, share the screen, and they could read together. The kid had the book in, their, in, in front of them, but they could look on the Zoom screen and there's the book they're reading. And, and you could use your cursor and, and use that for your finger to, to go across as you're reading. So it, it was just fabulous what happened. And one of the cool things about Zoom is we were able to bring in guest readers. And so instead of having the teacher doing the, the main read when we would start, we had a guest reader. So you talk about doctors, lawyers, Indian chiefs. We had literally a surgeon from an OR um, in, in Manti Memorial Hospital, and he had, he read a book I can't remember, but it was it was medical based, and then and then he took them on a tour of the ER, uh, the OR, and they had just gotten a new robotics, 
you know, they had the Da Vinci, they'd just gotten a new one, and he said, I'm gonna let y'all help me name the, the robot. And so the kids started shouting out names, and he used one of the names, and that's the name of the robot at Manatee Memorial now. And so they, they just loved it. I mean, they were so, so such a, a big part of it. We had bears, because there's a big bear ranch out in Mayaka. We had a giraffe, because there was a book, Giraffes Can't Dance. And so we're like, and then somebody said, you know, there's a you know, big game preserve, again, in, in Mayaka. What's it called? Oh, yeah, out on Rye Road Giraffes. And so it was so cute. You know, you've been on Zooms and you see all the faces, and so you've got 50 faces on this. And then all of a sudden this screen comes pops on you, and there's a giraffe sitting on this lady. I mean, her head is on the lady's shoulder because she's up a ladder leaning against the cage and so you would i was just watching the kids expressions and you know I'll, I'll, and then one would see it and they're like you, know, you could just see them just like zero in on the giraffe and so finally you're like but you had a real special guest today and so some of them still hadn't seen it and then you you accent that so that's the main screen and everybody were just like that and so she read the book on a ladder with a giraffe on her shoulder called giraffes can't dance so i mean it just gave them a lot of excitement we had an astronaut that had been on the space station who's a friend of a friend of ours. He was in Idaho. So, I mean, by Zoom, it enabled us to do things that obviously we couldn't get this guy to come to one of our restaurants for a class. But on Zoom, we had an astronaut, and so we showed a video of him doing um, exercise on the space station and then playing with a ball of water and then exploding into smaller <coughs> drops of water and then soaking it all up. And then he was in his uh, coverall with the NASA and the insignias and the logos and got to do Q&A with these kids. And I was sitting there thinking, I grew up in Central Florida. My parents took me to see Apollo 11 launch from the Kennedy Space Center. And I said, I can't imagine the experience of being able to talk to an astronaut live and, and you know, a guy that had been on the space station. So it was just, we had such great, great people that were, we were able to get because of Zoom. Dick Vital did our final one, and, and he donated so many things. And you, you talk about a guy that's motivating. When you got Dickie V talking about how important reading is, and he read a book live for us, and he's, it was, uh, it was an idea. what to do with an idea. And think about Dick Vital. I mean, here's an idea. And, you know, he's just going on and on. These kids were just loving it. And then, yeah, and then we had a, a, a prize. It was the last session. And so every time they had gone to one of our sessions, they got a... A raffle ticket and so we had laptops we had uh, what do you call them Chromebooks yeah, yeah. and then we had I can't tell you how many basketballs that Dick donated from his charity that he does like, and the kids were loving it but it gets them excited and that's what we're trying to do is get them excited about reading and about people caring about it and that's that's what our program has just we've been so fortunate to be able to bring this number of children we've done it for as I said five years it's Amanda's brainchild it started with a conversation from a gentleman that came, he's, he was gonna run for school board, and he said, I've got an idea. He moved from Washington, D.C., and he said, I've seen where, you know, we've gotten involved with business partners and we've brought guests, you know, restaurant guests to schools to be tutors, to, to be readers, to be, you know, uh, just things to come and volunteer in the schools. And I thought, man, that would be just such a great idea. And I was telling Amanda about it the night he came by, and she just transformed me. She says, why don't we bring the kids to the, to the restaurants instead of the restaurant to the kids? And she came up with the idea of bringing them in and teaching them. And like I said, we're teaching them life skills as, as, well, as, as well as reading. And we're teaching them self-confidence. And so it just transpired from there. Fortunately, the, um, the school district has worked with us. And, and, and tempered us the first year because we wanted to take all 15 the first year. Come on, bring them all. We started fortunately at one, one restaurant with three schools and it worked out well and we've just expanded from there. We were fortunate, that, as, as Jan said, Sarasota County. We've expanded in Sarasota County. We've expanded into DeSoto County. And so you want to talk about a, a community that needs help with literacy. You know, you can, you can feel better about yourself and then you look there, there at, I think, 67, or is it 90? I think it's 72%. 72% are below grade level reading in DeSoto County. In Sarasota? In Sarasota. DeSoto. DeSoto County. DeSoto County. Sarasota, I think, is uh, 49. Yeah, I mean, Sarasota's lower than you would expect. They're 40, 49%. What county are you mentioning? DeSoto County? 
it's Minnesota. Arcadia. I'm from Pennsylvania. It's it's due due east of here. Yeah, it's the next county past Mayaka. It's very agricultural. Yeah, it's agricultural mostly. So we're going to keep expanding our program. We're doing our best to come up with a playbook. When we were fortunate enough to win the national award, we were in D.C. to accept the award, and it was for the National Restaurant Association. They were all there for, for a summit. And so many people came up to us afterwards and said, please tell us about this program. We would love to do this in our restaurant, in our town. I mean, we had people from Wisconsin. So our goal is, and we've been talking to um, a dear friend of ours that's with the Department of Education in Tallahassee, and talking to her about you know possibly hiring her to come and put it all together for us to to get it so we can have a playbook that we can pass on we've we've done it on a shoestring uh, i mean we've done it ourselves but it needs if we're going to expand this to everything we need a playbook we don't want ownership we don't want all we want to do is say you, you want to do this in sheboygan you want to do this in st louis here's the book here's what to do and the biggest thing you do is you don't take no for an example or for an answer because you have to get the school district involved, obviously. And the first thing a school district will tell you is no. And the reason is because it's extra work. They've never done it before and it's out of their wheelhouse. But we are now listed on uh, the Manchi School Districts. We're par a partner in their grade level reading uh, initiative. It, it is working. So have you heard of the summer slide no. so they always call it the summer slide during summer because kids aren't in school their reading levels drop and so because you're not reading it you know what do you want to do in the summer you, you don't want to read you don't you certainly don't want to go to summer school but your parents aren't making you read go out and play go to the beach you know do whatever so it's called the summer slide and, and so from the last day of school of first grade till the first day of school of second grade your, your reading level drops. If you're not doing something every day, obviously your skill, if you stop playing golf for a year, your golf score would go up, right? Mine could not possibly go up any higher than it <laughs> But it's, it's with anything, if you stop doing it, you, you become less. So normal slide for a poverty level child is two to three months during the summer. So you think about it, you're here, and then you just drop right back down. Right, so you gotta pull that child back up to where they were. So they call it the summer slide. And so what we have in this past year, our average scores, and you'll have to help me. Because I. <laughs> so um, we, we, we're very lucky to partner with the Patterson Foundation in the school district. And so um, we get every child's ID number and hand them over to them. And so. We have the statistics to prove that um, the program works, which really um, oh, makes it, gives it a lot more credibility as well. Um, but our school, our, our 50, 559 children this year uh, gained half a month of reading skill on average across, across the board. There were some schools who gained 1.8. 1. 1. 1. 1. Two months? Wait, yeah. okay, you got the. We wrote them. I do, I found it. 1.2. There's, there's a couple of schools that gained a month. Um, you know, it was just, but, but on average, it was a gain of half a month instead of a loss of two and a half to three months. So, um, really, we were really, really happy with, with how it came this, how it turned out this year. And just about every year, we've had a gain. Um, and we're always looking for ways to improve. So, you know, as mentors and stuff, we listen to our teachers, we listen to our mentors and, and so on, because there's, there's ways to make it better every year. And uh, nothing's ever perfect. Because we did. We started with just one teacher facilitator in each one, and we, we wanted to add another, and we pay the teachers. So we're paying them $27 an hour to come in, and because they're not working in summer school, obviously. So we're paying them to be there, and we thought, we need two as I said earlier, and so we're paying two of them, and it's an average of two, three hours a day, because they've, they've got prep time and, and breakdown time, and then they're recording everything about it. As Amanda said, the Patterson Foundation is awesome. They, they were giving bracelets, you know how the kids, like the, what would Jesus do, those kind of bracelets everybody's got. They were giving bracelets the first couple of years for every book they read. 
and and so you know these kids are just blasting through books and some of them couldn't walk because they had so many bracelets on them. but it got them excited you know whatever to do you need to do to get these kids excited about reading um, is, is what you want to do and we've been fortunate because we have partners like the Patterson Fund. they are so behind grade level reading I mean it's their goal is to eliminate grade level reading the Florida Chamber of Commerce it's one of their goals is to have Florida the highest whatever literacy rates in the country and so grade level reading is a big focus for the Florida Chamber of Commerce um, it, there's a lot of people looking into it we're also partners with the Manatee County Library yeah. yes so they help us with books so back back to the, the kids sit down with the mentors and read a book they took that they take that book home with them when they leave so they're usually leaving with one or two books every time they come in. So by the end of the program, they've more than likely added 10 to 15 books to their library at home. Obviously, we want them to take them home and give it to their sibling, read to their sibling, read to the dog, but then have them read as well, um, which led us into a whole other <laughs> avenue. But let me finish that one. So we, we just partnered with a bunch, as Amanda said, the library system, Manatee, county government they allow their you know the supervisor election the clerk of courts quite a few allow their staff to come in late on the day they volunteer so they're allowed to come and volunteer at our program and get to work at 10 30 because the kids arrive obviously at nine o'clock in the morning they're there for about an hour and a half they're out the door at 10 10 30 because we need to open the restaurants at 11 so they're out the door at 10 30 the people can be at work at 10 30 and so they don't dock them paid time off. They don't make them take a vacation day. They're encouraging them to volunteer in, in their community, which is just fabulous. The Chambers of Commerce have gone out and said, please, you know, Lakewood Ranch Business Alliance, here's a great program for our community. Please volunteer. Because you ask, how do you get 300, 400 volunteers? That's a lot of volunteers for six weeks. And, and that's where it's come from. Because one of the numbers, We've done 1,400, 1,438 children in the five years, and we've had 1,192 mentors. That's a lot of mentors. <clears throat> Guess who gets to coordinate all the mentors? Yeah. And I get all the credit. It's awesome. <laughs> it is absolutely awesome. But, but we're seeing results, and we're seeing these kids. And it's not just our program. I, you know, we're, we're not taking 100% of the credit for these children. We're just a cog and we're a small part, in it, but it's everybody helping each other and helping with the goal of getting these kids. So if we don't drop three months and they only drop a two tenths of a month or they lift a month and a half, we're golden. We're ecstatic by those numbers, absolutely ecstatic by those numbers. And it's just, it's crucial. And we're constantly watching them. And, and then, as she said, we keep improving. We have debriefs at the end of the session, you know, at the end of the summer. What, you know, and we get the results from the school system. We're like, okay, Moody Elementary gained 1.2 months. What, what, and then we'll say they were at Gecko's on Tuesdays. What made Gecko's Tuesday better than, you know, the other program? What did you do? And, they, and they'll talk to each other. Well, we did the book reading this way. Oh, that makes sense. And so we're just making sure everybody's on the, you know, the same sheet. So. This works for us, and we had better results. I think what we also have found out this past year it is the attendance by the children. Because if you go back and look at their attendance records, the children who attended the most gained the most. And so, uh, you know, I, I know that doesn't really make sense, does it? <laughs> and so our goal this year is to try and work with the parents um, and show them what the children are doing when they come to the restaurants going to have a couple of open house mornings where we provide them with breakfast and they can come and visit and see so that they because sometimes it's not the easiest to get your child to school and in the summer you sort of thinking oh poor thing they need the time off <laughs> so um, we, we're, said, yeah, we're encouraging the parents yeah. because it, a lot of times the kids want to come yeah. but if it's inconvenient it doesn't always so if the parent knows it's a good program and it's helping their child, they're going to have buy-in. And that's what you're looking for always. Is you're looking for buy-in from parents. You really are. So I was about to tell you, when we won the award, they came and filmed. They did this great, beautiful 
video of, of, of the program. So we had to reenact it. And so we brought some kids from Palmella, Palmetto Elementary. And the Early Learning Coalition, who's a great partner of ours, brought books. So, you know, and so we brought mentors in and they were reading with them and they just reenacted it like it was happening live. And uh, so at the end of it, the ELC is about to leave and the, the kids were loaded up on the bus heading back to Palmetto and all these books are there. And so, you know, the ELC said, well, I'm not taking them back. And the school's like, well, we don't need them. And so there's 150 books sitting there, right? And so Amanda's like, we'll, we'll figure out what to do with these. And so she came up with the idea of a book nook. And so we have book nooks in all of our restaurants. So right in the front door, uh, it's like a little library. You know, you've seen like the little, little school, the little outside, you know, take one, leave one type thing. Well, the Early Learning Coalition is donating books to us, and we started by, we'll, we'll just give them to our guests. So I'd rather have a child while they're waiting on their food, reading a book than reading a device or on a device. I mean, I think it's important to let them feel and, and get them to love books. So we have book nooks, so the kids can come in, they grab a book, they go sit at the table, they order their, their kid's meal or whatever it is, and while they're waiting for the kitchen to prepare, they're reading a book, and then they take it home. So we're currently going through 1,000 books a month thousand books a month that our four restaurants are getting into the community. And the ELC is providing them for us at, at no cost. It is it's fantastic. I love hearing stories from people like, oh yeah, my daughter wanted to come to the Oyster Bar tonight. She, Can we go to that book restaurant, please? <laughs> I, I, I love being known as the book restaurant. I think that's awesome. I'll take that, that notoriety anytime. But it's just little things that everybody can do to help with the literacy problem. It's not something we all need to say, oh, it's too big, you know, can't solve that. It's just, you know, way too big a problem. We can. We can, if it, and it takes all of us. It really does. Let's see. Question. When does the program start? So it runs the week after school is out. So it's, it's tied in. They call it Camp Rise, and Camp Rise is for the children, as I said, that are at least one year behind. And so the Title I schools, Title I schools are, it's a federally funded school system, and it is for people uh, where a majority of the students in those schools are either below poverty or reading proficiency. And so that's, there's 15 in Manatee County, and that's who we do. So it starts the week after school lets out, and so this June year, specific, June 7th. June 7th, <laughs> and it'll run for six weeks, so they have 4th of July, well, it's 4th of July week is off. Uh, so it's five sessions over six weeks. So June, it's on, it's on, it's the, on the flyer. The flyer. Yes. Um, we are definitely looking for mentors. mentors. On the flyer is um, a website, and there is a link there if you'd like to um, just put your name down. We don't have the specific days at the restaurants yet because that schedule hasn't been made. Uh, but if you're interested, um, you can sign up and. Uh, if you have already volunteered in the past, I have your email address unless, it, unless it's changed. So it, probably the best way is just to sign up at the, on, the, on the Oyster Bar website and, uh, and I'll add you to the, uh, to the email list. And I do not bombard, bombard you with emails, I promise. I send maybe um, four or five a year. Are you gonna keep doing Zoom sessions? No. No, we're, I mean, the in-person is so much better. Is transportation for the kids an issue? Well, because they're going to school, it's not a school. they come in a bus. Oh, okay. So they're already, the, the, the child is transported to school by bus or whatever. <clears throat> as soon as they arrive at school, they flip around, hop on another bus that comes to the restaurant. Okay. So, so it's not, we're not requiring the parents to drop them off there. Yeah. So transportation. And again, that's, that's part of what the school district has, has bought in. The first year they said, we'll do transportation. Next year you'll have to find it. So we've gone out in the community and found funding for things, but then the school district, maybe it was part of the referendum money and, and the sales tax money, they were able to find <coughs> funding for our transportation. Maybe it was, they saw it's a good program. And so they said it's worth the extra uh, fees. We are considered a field trip. So that's how they're able to do that. I mean, you couldn't, not everybody could say, hey, can you bring kids by, you know. We're considered a field trip. So one day they go to Jungle Gardens, one day they come 
for a reading program at the at dive into reading. That's how it's designated to with the school system. Yes, ma'am. And a question. First of all, your passion is amazing. I just want to say thank you for all the educators that you're supporting and for the kids. It's absolutely remarkable. Thank you. But your excitement is what makes it so. Yeah. It's really thrilling. But to say well, let me stop you just for a second. When you see these children, I mean, here's a cool here's a cool experience. The first week when the kids come in, they're so nervous. I mean, they are they're they're so timid, and they're like watching, and they're like you know they're like this, and so we we've had mentors come up. And go, I don't think my kid can read, right? Because they're just so they're so nervous. They just sit there. The second, third, fourth week, those kids hit the door and they are running across the dining room to their mentor. They're just hugging on their leg. They're just it, and then the last week. There's nothing but tears when they're leaving. But we do it. I'll do it. We do a cool thing when they're leaving. We do it. We call it a clap out. So all the mentors line up the the hallway on the way to out the door. And when these kids are heading the bus, everybody's high fiving them as they go by and, and clapping and tell them great job. And so you just the smiles you see on these children is unbelievable. So sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but it is. It's so infectious when you see the kids excited. It gets the mentors excited. It gets everybody excited. And our staff, they all love it. They are, they're so We're going to go to one of your restaurants for sure before we leave that, Maria. Before you head back to Pennsylvania. I see your book note. But the question I had is, is that video that they made for your national award available somewhere on YouTube or anything? I believe it's on our website. I, I'll make sure it is. And my email address is on here, so I can send it to you. Okay. And also, the school district has made one as well. Right. Um, they made one this past summer. I work with teachers and school districts, okay. but not in Florida. So, uh, oh, we you would still love to do be that in or? Pennsylvania. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, haven't, you haven't shot yourself yet? For, for <laughs> administrators? And, yeah, I, I, I truly believe our playbook will say, don't take no for an answer, because that's how administration starts. No. It's a wonderful program. So, so I've never yeah. heard anything like it. Yeah, yeah I wanted yeah. to hear this because I've done a lot of, re of volunteering in the past, but I was always going into schools to help yeah. children. And it was any age from young ones up through junior high school, actually. And one thing we've struggled with, in all honesty, is connecting the mentors back to the schools. Because Denise had a little boy that, you know, just fell in love with and wanted to continue helping. And it, it, we've had difficulty saying, okay, Moody Elementary, what day do you need volunteers? You know, I need them Tuesday at 11 a.m. Yeah. And so that we want to get to our mentors and say, it may not, you know, let's just say Denise's child was at Mayaka and she's not going to drive from out yeah. here to Mayaka. But if she could volunteer at another school and meet another little Johnny, mm -hmm. that would be awesome too. Right. You may not be able to connect with your child. We had, I believe it was yours. Mm -hmm. yes. It was yours, she little girl, yeah. reached out through connection, said, can you get to Miss Denise? I'd like for her to come. I mean, you, you want to talk about break your heart. Just, yeah. So, so that's what, that's what, that's what, but we're also, you know, we want to say, you know, if you live close to Palmetto Elementary, yeah. Manatee Elementary, they need people Tuesday at noon, Tuesday yeah. at eight, whatever it, it is. And here's the teacher coordinator there. Yeah, and that's Please right. reach out to Mrs. Smith and, and say, I'll be there every Tuesday for. And, and that's, that's the way I did, I did it through my church up on Temple Terrace. Right. Uh, in Tampa. I had one little girl that I worked with for quite a while, and every single week she would say, who's paying you to do this? And I'd say, I had taught school for just a few years when I couldn't find a job in chemistry. <laughs> but uh, she asked me that every single week. She could not believe that I was not being, that I would do it that way. Yeah. And I said, oh, that is so sad. Uh, Yes, sir. Is anyone looking at what happens to the kids after a year? I ran a follow-through program for kindergarten through third grade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we had significant impact on them for those three years. Mm -hmm. yes, but in many of these places where there's no follow-up by the district, then it all falls apart because these kids got a tough life. 
They do. And you're 100 percent right. They do. And, and I, I don't know if yeah. there is, because I mean, the the data is collected every year, and you just need somebody to look at it. Right. Yeah. And and as we get smarter and more technological, it's easy to yeah. track and trace and yeah. follow. It, you're 100 percent right. Because they're they're still ID. <laughs> right. No, but they know that you know ID number one two three four was in this program. And where are they five years from now? Uh -huh. And yeah. where do they stand in rankings right. versus well, it, their? It's almost like if just case studies with some kids to see how this fits in and right. what, exactly. what are the things that seem to help. <clears throat> right. That's a great idea. Thank you. Do you have something you You do? I hope so. You know, what I thought was really interesting is when you have the buffets and the little kids can go, and I think maybe for the first time, get as much food as they want. And I would have one little boy who loaded up on all beverages at first, and then would go through the buffet itself, and then have to go to the bathroom because he, he, he eats so much, but it was the, he was so thrilled to be able to have enough food yeah. that he could pick. And some of these children don't know where their next meal is no, coming from. Not so right. You know, yeah, but one of the things we said, Amanda's always said, you know, we teach them, we serve them a meal, a, a plated meal the first time because that's just the easiest. And then the next week we do buffet because they need to learn buffet. And, you know, we, we discourage them from piling a plate. We encourage them to go back, go back, go yes, back. Exactly. You can go back as many times as you want. But but you're you have to overcome. Yeah. I hate to say survival instincts, yes. but that's what it is. Um, she also says that adults need uh, buffet etiquette sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but then the last session, we, we make a menu for them, and we bring servers in, and they get to order off a menu. And so it's, they get a real restaurant experience. And so it's just, you know, you're giving them experiences. Yeah. Like I said, I, what I never realized that in Title I schools they can't use knife and fork because you may, you know, discriminate against one of the children that doesn't know how to use a knife or fork, so they give them sporks. Oh, but I think this is discriminating against them. It, well, my thing was, aren't you the teacher? Teach them how to use a knife and fork. Exactly. Right? It's part of education. Right? If they're not getting it at home and they don't eat, I mean, people eat with their fingers. I mean, you watch kids the first week and they're eating everything with their hands. But that's what we're trying to teach them is if they're not going to have tea with the queen when they finish our dining program, trust me. But they will know to put a napkin in their lap and a knife and a fork. So we just want to give them some life skills. But I, I don't understand why they won't, you know, they give them sporks. It, it makes zero sense to me. I think one of the favorite things that we do too is at the end of the program, um, they get backpacks filled with gloves school-ready supplies and some books, more books and that kind of stuff. But they also get a gift card to the Edinburgh Oyster Bar. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. And the gift card enables them to come into the restaurant with their family and show their family what they've learned. And I'm, I'm not sure that many of them actually come in. I, it's, it's a tough it's, sell to, I mean, yeah. a lot of people can't afford to come to dinner. They but, really can. But, but the first year, we gave the children a t-shirt that meant they could come and eat for free for an entire year. And we couldn't understand why they didn't come in until it's like, well, oh yeah, um, maybe they can't afford to. So that's why we the put parent the can't afford to. That's why we put the gift card in with it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. And it, you, it's fun when they do come in because they're like, this is where I sat, okay. and this is where Mrs. Jeannie and I were, you know. And the staff take pictures and they send them to us. <laughs> it's awesome. Is anybody really else doing this program anywhere besides? Just DeSoto County and Sarasota County. No, but that's for you. But I mean, yes, ma'am. I'm sure there's some type, but that's what we would love to, to be able to spread the word about. And I, I as she, I'm sorry, it was you, Jan. Um, I am vice chair of the Florida Restaurant and Lodging Association this year. Next year, I'll be the chairman. And it's going to be one of my initiatives is try to get some traction, some footing to expand our program um, throughout the whole state. So just out of being curious, what do you serve? I mean, exactly. What, what For breakfast? Yeah. What do you so we do different things. So like the first one is, I mean, we'll have scrambled eggs, bacon, sausage, um, hash browns. We love um, it when they do hash browns. 
Yeah. Because we get them too. <laughs> yeah, there's little hash browns that look like Tetris shapes, and the kids love those. It's just crazy. Um, and we do pancakes. We do different different meals. We do burritos, breakfast burritos. Um, and so they're they're getting, you know, a hot, fresh, freshly made breakfast. With protein. They get yeah. orange juice and milk and yeah. chocolate milk. And so so the expense of the program.